cloud. Okay, it's recording. Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Jenkins Infrastructure Public Team Meeting. Uh, we are the 22th of March. Uh, the notes, uh, as usual, are taken collaboratively on ACMD and will be published on the Jenkins Infra slash documentation public repository as well on community Jenkins IO and the recording will be on YouTube. Today we have Mark Waits, Stefan Merle, Hervé Lemur, and Hi Demand Portal. Okay, let's get started with announcement. Um, I assume the weekly release was finished or almost. I see it's visible on Jenkins IO at least for, for the package. Uh, I haven't checked the Docker Hub. I assume if the case Yeah, Damien, the... I'll run the, I'll, okay. So I, I will run the release checklist sometime later today. Okay. Um, there's, there's, I suspect there's more work to be done. I just don't know what the work is yet. Okay. Almost finished. Okay. Certainly the war file is there, but I yep. haven't seen indications of, of, well, the checklist is there. We, I, it just needs to run the checklist. Okay. But at least the packages are there, which mean the war and most of the native packages have been built. So six release in a row, eight if we count the two past security LTS without any issue in the process. So good job people. Are there other announcements? No, okay, so let's proceed. So let's get started. So more for information, we are trying a new process for uh, having actionables in the form of GitHub milestones. So the idea is that we start by checking the milestone of the current date for, of today. And we start by the closed issues. So all of the help desk issues that we worked on and finished our pull requests on that repo um, have been associated to that milestone. So let's see what we did since last week by checking this closed issue. So that should be quite quick. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight. A major one, we had an AWS key exposure. Uh, all the details have been written on the issue 2830. It has been closed under the assumption that the, the keys have been rotated. We have been able to demonstrate that it wasn't been used for anything. And the root cause was fixed. Um, unless someone need more details or if the issue is not clear, I, am, I won't spend time detailing. We put a lot of information. And we have, just for information before I let you have a point, we have two subtasks that are long-term improvement related to that area that have been opened. There is one which is work in progress. So we will go back to that one around templatize the job definition to generate DSL folders. And there is one in the new or to-do list. Hervé, you were saying something. Yes, it's good. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was a, a minor issue, minor impact. Uh, there are a lot of things that can be improved. Uh, summary, be careful when you have GitHub check because it's enabled by default and it can exfiltrate sensitive information from Jenkins log output. Yes, it's not the good issues on screen. That's why oh. I... Sorry, I click on the bad one. My apologies, 28.34. Thanks. Uh, is there any question, point, things I could have forgotten, things not clear on that one? Okay. okay. Next one, Fastly. So now, uh, let me click from here. Now, Fastly, thanks to the work of Hervé, is managed by Terraform. So we have a fully managed public repository, which means that 
we hope that next uh, Fastly option update, if someone has to add a header, change the settings, instead of being done manually on Fastly web UI, should be done through pull request to that repository. So now there is a cache in a Fastly cache invalidation step that happens as part of weekly and LTS builds. I assume that's not requiring a Terraform change, or, or no. is it? Okay. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, it's some pure request. Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, I'm, I have to check the pipeline of uh, release, but I think they are calling the Fastly API with a token, allowing them to purge uh, complete services. Right, and and it is just I'm confident it's, it is an API call, so so it's okay that that continues to be done. Yes, but we, we, it would be good to identify the token used by the release. Okay. So we know this one is used for this. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Token count doesn't seem to we doesn't seem to be possible to generate token uh, uh, as code. Okay. So yeah, that that let's say the limit managing tokens and, and validating cache. However, invalidating cache might not be needed on Terraform, but at least we gain some auditing and the ability to everyone to see the settings publicly and to propose improvement, especially in area where a security header is required. Um, when Gavin will publish the Jenkins is a way a website, he will have the possibility to add. Uh, in this repository, uh, the corresponding services without going to Fastly and Tafas. Jenkins. Jenkins is the way website. Right. And okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. And so that will be Fastly cached and it will require a change to cache it. I, I thank you. Thanks very much. It will be a new services service in Jenkins, in Fastly uh, naming. The great job, better auditability is always good. Uh, next item in the um, Azure resources are now managed again with Terraform. So that's the marketing branding. In fact, we don't manage anything. It's just that the, the we recreate, we reinitialized the whole project. We removed all the old Terraform definition that weren't updated since one year, one year and a half at least. So we will have a task to re-import resources, the existing resources and creating the new one, but now we are ready to operate. Um, so the next step for this one will be adding, uh, I forget it, up. So it's empty state. Um, there are some work in progress or new issues that will be around adding managed databases for rating Jenkins IO at least and short term and uh, for the new private Kates cluster. So that will uh, use this one. Please note that these two Terraform manage projects are using exactly the same shared tooling as the existing AWS, Datadog and DigitalOcean. We use the same pipeline and the same make file and the same versions. So great job, people. Um, thanks, Hervé, for adding a new team for Terraform on GitHub that allows us to have code review automatically pinging the correct person and to ease the management of uh, the repositories. Thanks, Stefan, on the huge work you did on helping us to bump Terraform version on to 1.1. .1. And now it's fully automated from all projects with synchronized updates. That's a really, really huge one. Uh, thanks also, Stefan, uh, Hervé and team around the auto-label issues. So now, based on the kind of uh, service people select on help desk, we have uh, more labels automatically set so it's easier for us to get statistics and to, to use the labels on 
the bunch of issues we have. So really cool. I forgot, I realized I forgot one issue that we closed during the weekend. Sorry, I'm opening it right now. Um, we were a bit too enthusiastic to deliver the new Maven version. I mean, it's full automated. It was just one button, except that Maven 3.8.5 uh, is subject to a, a regression. So thanks, Basil, for letting us know. The consequence is that as soon we updated Maven last Friday, it started to break all the builds of the Jenkins core, at least, and maybe more. So we had to roll back to the Maven 3.8.4. Uh, we are <clears throat> we are looking for three dot eight dot six. So let me add that to the milestone. So, and I had not detected that failure in my infrastructure when I rolled out Maven three dot eight dot five. But I only had a day or two of testing in before. So I I I'm glad that it was easy to roll back. I was quite surprised. I still haven't rolled back my personal infrastructure. Okay. So good, good to know. And so I still need to write down an issue. I realized that I forgot that. <clears throat> I think the person who did the huge work of update CLI Terraform synchronize updates could do that. I have no um, with that. <laughs> um, to ensure that we have synchronized Maven version updates between container agents, VM packer templates, and Jenkins tools. Everywhere. So uh, I will add it to do after the meeting. And second thing, I'm responsible for deploying Maven in an enthusiastic way last Friday. So an improvement proposal that I'm making a lot there to be challenged, could be improved, could be better. It's trying to avoid to deploy changes to CI Jenkins IO, at least new tooling feature on Friday. At least afternoon. Um, I always have mixed feeling about that kind of rule, honestly, because the, I mean, it broke some usages, but the problem is not because we deploy it quickly. It's better to have the latest version quickly. What is missing is a way for our users to be able to test some changes like canary deployment or elements like this. So the don't deploy on Friday is just for me a temporary hack to avoid having our user frustrated by the fact that this does not work, but it's an opportunity to us to think about how could we deploy a new version of the tooling. And the, one of the reason for Maven is sensitive for most of our users, it's a central tooling like GDK. These two are really central, eventually Git as well. So we could think about a way to either propose age agents or canary deployment, like only 10% for one week. We could think about these elements, but for now we need a synchronized deployment of Maven in order to think about improved deployment patterns. So do not deploy on Friday for tools of CI Jenkins IO. Is that yeah. okay for you? See, I'm I put I would push back and say no, I don't think we should even restrict ourselves to that. Because yeah, I, I guess it's a workable temporary thing until mm -hmm. we find a better way as you suggested is there a way to do canary or to do new temporal than actually but right new rule the canary for 10 percent looks good yeah so yeah okay. so I, I will say the point here is how do we ensure that there isn't any bug we could ask Basil, since he opened the issue, so he cooked the issue, if he has any insight, because he's the only person who was able to report that to us. So having his insight and ideas on that area, what do you think about we ask him? Because he might have ideas on, oh, we could add a health check. Um, I know, Mark, that you already use a job that I tend to do, and I um, I checked that this job was working after the deployment, that check that the agent could be spawned. And that job is called by the BOM archive uh, builds, which are big, big builds. 
So it runs as pre-build. So it starts by running the health check job. The jobs check that each label required by uh, that job can be spawned and unspawned to be sure that AWS is reachable, that you have the correct template available, etc. But that job is not able to catch a bug in Maven that happen on specific builds. So maybe we could improve that job to run a Maven clean build maybe on the Jumi plugin that we use sometimes, the infra to test. Maybe it could be improved. The, that, th those what techniques have to be kept lightweight, but if we can find something that is very lightweight that still does some, some interesting check, why not? Yeah. But whatever the health check we're doing, we, we will still have the possibility to crash everything on a Friday. Sure, the, the health so, check is still, all of those checks are still incomplete. The good thing is that we can revert kind of easily. The problem mm -hmm. is that we need a way for every everybody to be able to, to ring a bell and say, oh, something is wrong. But uh, whatever health check we do, that will not be as good as the real life check. Sure. So that's why the 10% the with the canary version tempted me. But we need to make sure that if something fell on those 10%, we got the information. Exactly. Hence the health check proposal. Even with open telemetry enabled, I don't know. So that's why I asked Basil for advice idea. Mm -hmm. How could we cook that? The question is, I understand our developer frustration, but if it's if it happens one or twice a year for one or two people, that's that's to be challenged. Uh, that rule has to be challenged. But I propose that we apply it for now. We just be careful on when we deploy. Um, that should be good enough, and, at least for the it main. It depends on why you deploy, because if it's just an upgrade like that, it can't wait for Monday. But if it's a security upgrade you may take the risk and, and go ahead and, and drop it exactly. on Friday. That's the point of, of uh, PR, it's pull request. And there is a, a brain behind that who say, okay, mm -hmm. I, I approve or not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if it's okay for you, I will transform that as an actionable in the uh, CI documentation public page where we list the labels and capabilities available for the builds. I will add um, uh, to, I will open a pull request and ask the three of you for sure to validate it before merging. So not only one of us. And I will also mention Basil to have an advice on the pull requests. Does it sound good for you in terms of process? It's yes. great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Last element we worked on, um, add Docker Hub credential to the Datadog deployment to avoid being rate limited. Uh, so thanks for the work on that part, Stefan. So now we have a new Elm chart that deploy that credential on every namespaces that require it, including the Jenkins agents for CI Jenkins IO, where it was manually managed previously. So now it's automatically managed from subs, same mm -hmm. credential. And then uh, all Datadog benefits from Will decrease the amount of failed data installation. Your, your, we cannot hear you well. Oh, oh. Can, continue. I, at least I yes. think I was hearing you. Go ahead. David. Okay. Um, however, we still have issues, even with that uh, add on to Datadog, the issue still happen with the rate limits. That will be the next topic on work in progress. Before we jump to that, did I forget some tasks that uh, you folks closed during the past week? Don't think so. Not sure, but I don't think so. Okay. So that's already a lot of work. So now work in progress. That should that should correspond to open issue on the current milestone. So we will, for each one, we will cover it and see if it's something that we continue working on or if we remove it. The goal is that that milestone should be closed after that with no open issues, either back to triage or 
uh, delayed to the next uh, milestone. Yeah, uh, just for yes. the done for the done one, uh, we for, did we mention the status uh, check where we removed uh, we um, the removal of the log in status check oh. in GitHub status check. Uh, for me, it was implied on the AWS API key exposure, but okay, yeah, uh, sure. yeah, yeah, no, uh, no, okay. okay. It's in there. It's Is that in okay? There. We can cover it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Okay. Thanks for checking. So on the area of work in progress issues, um, Docker Hub credential for VM agents. So that one is quite tricky. Um, uh, Tim and so Mark saw some API rate limits on builds on CI Jenkins IO for jobs that were building Docker images for Jenkins, either controller and or agents. After uh, uh, checking, we thought that we weren't using authenticated call to the Docker Hub, but in fact, we are and we did. Um, the thing is, we reach a new kind of API limit. If you don't use authenticated Docker engine, then you are rate limited per public IP. That's the only way for the Docker Hub to track your requests. If you are authenticated with an account, that's better, it's not per IP, but it's per account. And we reached the limit that Hervé got on the official Docker documentation, which is 200 requests per account for six hours, which is not a lot in fact. And we reached that limit with CI Jenkins IO builds. What are the solutions? Um, so right now there is a work on progress to improve the code of the pipeline library that use the that define the credential. And the idea will be to split on multiple accounts to load. So there are different uh, working angles there, having at least one pool account and push account separately. So if you reach rate limit for the pool account, you don't endanger the ability to push new image. And also the, the angle of one pool account for each Jenkins controller that we use at least. And we can even push forward with different uh, Docker pool accounts, depending on the cloud, that, like uh, the, the kind of agent, is it a virtual machine or a container? or work a node on Kubernetes. Because we saw exactly the same thing with the Datadog deployment. When we have a big bomb build that schedule a bunch of pod and trigger auto scaling on AWS Kubernetes cluster, Datadog starts to reach the rate limit with the images. So for Datadog, there are other way to fix that by not using images hosted on Docker Hub. We could have our mirror, we could add Docker Hub proxies. But on short term, um, at least spreading the load between different accounts is uh, a, quite easy to implement. Also, as noted by Hervé, um, we could check the open source subscription on Docker Hub for, these, uh, for the account we are using for pulling images. So Hervé opened an, an issue that is struck on the team weekly note as to do. The idea is to check the open source program because we know that we already apply to that program and we are currently gathering information which Docker Hub account of Jenkins related stuff is, um, is subject to this one. Olivier shared an information with Hervé and I by email that he never got answer back from Docker about Jenkins for Eval and Jenkins CI Infra Docker Hub accounts. So it looks that only the Jenkins organization on the Docker Hub account is subject to, this, to that program, which means the extended rate limits and maybe other features are only applied to that account, which we don't have access to. It's not Jenkins Infra area. So if it's okay for everyone, I will continue I will take by, take the contact that Olivier shared with us. I will add uh, the Jenkins Infra mailing, private mailing, and get the discussion started again with Docker to ask what is possible to do with them. Yes, great. Additional points. I know that on the enterprise account of Docker Hub, we can generate multiple token accounts 
to spread the API rail limits. And some of these tokens can be read only, which add another layer of security. You can only pull image and not push. Yeah, could be great that for the pool, yeah. So that could solve the push and pull account security issue, even though still better to use on CI Jenkins IO uh, another account than an official one. Maybe Jenkins for Aval could be okay. Is there any question or thing that we forgot? No. Just a reminder that what team, um, last time we had API rate limits, team uh, pushed also another solution that could be as much as possible, try to avoid hosting Docker images on the Docker Hub if we need it. We could benefit from the recent AWS automatic mirror of the Docker Hub. That will mean paying a bit for the storage on AWS, but it's quite, it's, it's not expensive. We could also try to build some Docker uh, proxy cache, but that one is really tricky because you need to either add some transparent proxy uh, rules on the network. So you need to fine tune the network and sometimes it doesn't work as expected. Or you need to configure all the Docker Hub to use that image to override on the go the namings. So that's why the last time we all consensus that it might be too too much effort. Well, we could just ask Docker. Um, next work in progress: add an email alias for press. So we don't have. Uh, the, the question is from Gavin is he want to add a new email alias, uh, but the MX of Jenkins IO is currently delegated to Mailgun accounts that neither Olivier, Mark, I, Gavin, neither Tyler, we learned that a few days ago, have access to. So the last person that could have access seems to be KK. We haven't heard from Kosuke uh, by email. So let's wait one more week before. Um, the thing is we could always change the MX to whatever mail system, but we might lose the list of email accounts that are configured on that MX. So if we do that, if I understand correctly, Stefan, I let you stop me and correct if I'm wrong. We need a, a kind of catch all uh, account and we need all to have access to discover again uh, that part. Yeah, we can we can receive all the email and then by uh, analyzing the the mail coming in understand who address uh, who got an address or not we we have to make sure that the spam is not uh, uh, making us think that uh, some uh, account exists you will always receive the uh, email to uh, jim or tom or yep. uh, usual names um, on the other side, thanks again, Olivier, for pointing us to uh, the correct interlocutor at the Linux Foundation uh, uh, scope. So it looks like that if we want to take care of the email mix instead of Mailgun, once we know which what do we want, we, we only have to open an issue like we do for Jira at the Linux Foundation. They have the IT service for that. So if unless someone is against that, maybe we could ask one time to the board mark, but it feels like that the Linux foundation is a good idea. So they could take care of the mailing system. We just have to determine which list we ask them to create. And, and we've, we've certainly liked their services on the JIRA system that they host for us. Linux foundation has my full support. I think they did great for it. Maybe we can also try to uh, get in touch with Melgen to uh, find a way to uh, discover all the account we have uh, mm. now, even if we don't get any uh, any uh, login. Yep. Maybe they can at least provide the the list of uh, accounts. Yep. Uh, good point. Um, would any answer from KK? Is it okay if we contact? Uh... Again, uh, let's let's say uh, deadline is next infrastructure meeting. Yes. Try to contact Megan. It's uh, four past five. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much, but this subject are 
really important. Are you okay if we continue at least uh, until uh, uh, the, for the next 10 minutes? Yes, for me. We don't hear uh, you. Mark. You're muted, Mark. I have to drop off for another meeting, but okay. I, I proceed without me. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we are blocked currently on another important topic, the ability to define credential at folder jobs level. Um, for at least being able to migrate safely infrastructure report job from trusted CI to infra CI. For improving the AWS uh, exposure risk with the Terraform, we want we don't want Terraform for AWS to be able to access the credential of Terraform Fastly. And we also need that for the update CLI migration on a centralized multi-brand job. So we have at least three major tasks on the near future that require that. So we are blocked by this one. Um, Hervé, can you just give us a status update on email notification from GFrog yeah. Cloud status? I didn't progress on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I... Um, I won't put it in the next uh, milestone. It's more uh, so nice to have. Uh, okay, so back to triage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, is it okay if uh, we add back triage or should we just remove any milestone? I would remove the milestone. Okay, fine for me. Fine for you, Stefan? Yes, yes. Okay. You have to clear the milestone. Show oh. you. Okay. Yeah. And oh. same thing for the GitHub uh, status tracking. Same thing for GitHub. Okay. Uh, uh, the GitHub, GitHub status, status page. Uh, I'm receiving the webhooks from mm -hmm. GitHub status page, but I have to make uh, something okay. about them. Probably. Thanks. Uh, keep an issue open with our change and update. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm moving to the upcoming milestone Docker up credential, define credential. I'm clearing migrate infra report uh, milestone because we are blocked by another task. So either I, uh, we add it if we are quick enough, but given our rates, doesn't make sense. A switch from GitHub Action to Jenkins for update CLI tasks. There um, is no urgency. I'm not sure we have to keep it. Yeah. Okay. And as far as I remember, we discussed and agreed on um, uh, 2778 should be done before. So having a specialized uh, multi brand job on Infra CI that cover all the update key of all our reports. Yeah. Let me clear the milestone, which in turn, that one required the, uh, it has no milestone because it required the credential to be defined at job level. So it's sequential, yeah. so no milestone as well. Um, so let's move it to the next milestone. Same for this one. Uh, we have GC AWS old image yeah. from Packer. Can you remove the label tree age? Yep. Um, is it okay for you, Stefan, to take it for the next milestone for yes. the upcoming week? I started it, so I want to keep it for the next one. Yeah, so assign it to Stefan. Yep. Yeah, that's a copy of my private one, so I had to redo the issue. Okay. So the milestone for this week can be closed. Good for you? Good. Yes. Thank you. Oh, where is it? Yeah, 22. Yeah, just today. where you were okay. on it. Yeah, I had uh, the Zoom uh, toolbar. OK, so I'm just double checking the work in progress and uh, just to be sure that we agree on uh, what can be done on the uh, next iteration, and then we can finish with the new elements to see if we add them back. Migrate rating Jenkins IO to Azure, which means 
uh, that's the adding the managed database on Terraform Azure. Uh, is that okay that uh, um, Stefan and I take that one as a way yeah, no to problem. introduce Stefan? Okay, so I unassign you. And that's the one you, we stole you. Okay. Um, there is one, I'm not sure if it should be update Terraform chat tool to write the STDR to local file. That's a to do minor to do after the AWS exposure. Yeah, but is it really necessary since we can consult the full log in Infra, let's say item Jenkins.io? It's nice yeah. to have, but it doesn't okay. really matter. Yeah, I, that, 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 I agree. Is it okay if we close it then? Yeah. Won't be implemented uh, since GitHub status check disabled. And so I can remove it from the milestone as well. Okay. Um, the email alias for press. Uh, we have the Docker Hub credential for VMs. GC old image. Define credential. That's already a lot of work. Um, RV. You raised the thanks. Um, you reminded me. I missed that one. There is um, someone had an issue with their account on Jenkins.io. Is it okay if we take this one? I can help, someone can take it. Is it okay to have this one on the here? Yes. Is there anyone volunteering for that one or should I assign it to me by default? Have fun. Okay. <laughs> there will be enough for everyone. <laughs> Um, this is a new one. I've added it to the milestone, I think, by, by error. So first of all, before I go on the monitor builds, is there any work that you are currently working on that we didn't speak or forget to add to the milestone? Um, planning on uh, Oracle resources. Maybe I will wait for Stefan and your work on rating. Yep. And in that case, uh, scale way, I don't know, mm -hmm. or I will. Okay. May I ask you to add the milestone to scale way then? Yeah. So as we discussed a bit in private before, um, I was the person in contact with scale way. So I'm gonna send an email to the scale way team introducing Hervé as the person that will lead the account for now and with the Jenkins Infra team private email in CC so that uh, Hervé can drive uh, the partnership, create the Scaleway account, see if we have the credits and start the work on terraforming all of this in autonomy. And so we plan the Oracle part on once we will have done the migrate rating so that Stefan can take the lead on Oracle helped by either Hervé or me uh, which will be more importing resources and uh, initializing the project. Great. Sounds good? Yes. So that will span on the free next weeks. Hence, we don't add this to uh, on here. Uh, we don't add the Oracle one and we add the skill one. Um, so on the new element, monitor builds on private Jenkins. Trust we should start to implement a way to monitor the builds on trusted CI, at least some of the most important one. All of the details have been put on the issue. Uh, Daniel Beck, thanks, thanks for your help. Uh, he proposed um, uh, a Akish solution that is more than Akish, where an external job uh, will check uh, an export, a JSON export with the dat time. Because not only we have to watch if a job fails, but we also have to watch if a, if a job was scheduled. If the, word, if the job wasn't scheduled, then you don't have a failure notification. So we need to watch to both. And we might have the same issue on Infra CI as well, and eventually release CI. So it's a multi-step process, but we, have to, we absolutely have to start with trusted, trusted CI because not, it's blocking the update center, 
it's blocking the security teams and it's blocking our external user. And it's not the first time that Daniel uh, asked us to monitor that. Right now, Daniel is our uh, watchdog, which is not really acceptable. <laughs> not that he's, he's doing a good job at that, but yeah, I mean, that's not sustainable. So thanks, Daniel, for that. Um, there have been some details on that part. I propose that uh, we put that as uh, after the current priority, but still I keeping it in the upcoming, because as soon as you have some time thinking about how to implement it there, asking Daniel for more details, checking the existing elements could be a great help. For information, there is an existing process on Datadog that watches the last updated time of the update center JSON file. So we could reuse that logic and code for the same there. That's to mention. Um, we remove the shared tools, so I remove it from the meeting note. We've added the uh, migrate rating, so that's okay. For the new one, I will simply link to the next milestone. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Uh, so I, I, let me update the notes just after. I don't want to take too much yeah. of your time. We have the a new issue, not on a milestone, about migrating trusted Jenkins to release CI Jenkins, at least the Docker builds. Uh, the issue has been created with details. It's just for information. And on my side, I will add that issue, the add private case AKS cluster. Uh, I don't add it to the current milestone. I want to first drive uh, Stefan on the, ra uh, the rating, but that one will be exactly the same. So we can also have another opportunity to work together. I feel like I will have a lot of work after that, yes. Um, I volunteer to lead the private case because it's a topic I just like to do and I would like to monitor that one, but I need one of you folks to shadow me or at least review it. Yeah, I'd like to be on this one too. Okay. So I'm not adding it to the milestone, but I assign so RV and I. And we will see if we have time to work on it. It's important the most prior converter the task. Sounds good? Mm, we didn't urge you really good, but yeah, sounds good. Really? The sound is distorted. So sounds good, yeah, but we didn't hear not you really well. Soon, but not really sounding. Okay. <laughs> okay. So good, but not so I well. need to update the meeting notes after releasing you and then publish it. Is there okay. any other points to pick you want to raise? No, thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks for your work, folks. For your feedbacks and um, have a good day see you next week bye bye see you.